It's sometimes easy for students to confuse levels and the name of the variable. The variable is the thing being measured, and the levels are the different values that the measurement can take. If you want to figure out the levels for a variable, you should ask yourself, what values can the variable be? For instance, a dichotomous variable, like gender, can only take two levels. A continuous variable, on the other hand, can theoretically take any value. For instance, how much you like something could ostensibly range from extreme hate, a value of negative 10 billion, to extreme love, a value of positive 22 billion. Sometimes continuous variables have limits, though. For instance, it's impossible to have a negative age, so the continuous variable age is bounded at zero. The key to figuring out the levels of the variable, like I said, is to ask yourself this question. What values can this variable take? Once we know the levels of the variable, we can start thinking about the scale that the variable is measured on. There are several different scales, some easier to tell apart than others. The big distinction is between categorical and continuous variables. If there are a limited number of categories that a person could choose, that's categorical. For instance, gender and city in which you live are categorical variables. If we assigned numbers to those variables, the numbers wouldn't do any work for us except as an identifier. If the numbers mean something, though, that's when we have a continuous variable. Once we figure out that we have a continuous variable, we have to decide which type of continuous variable we have. The first question that we should answer is, are the intervals of the variable the same size? What we mean by intervals are the same size is that the distance between 1 and 2 is the same as the distance between 2 and 3. So if it's more difficult to get to the next number as you increase, or possibly decrease, those intervals are not the same. Let's think of a couple examples. Movie critics Sis Siskel and Ebert are famous for rating movies as 0, 1, or two thumbs up. They were also known to have very different tastes. As such, it wasn't hard to get one of them to like a movie, but it was really hard to get both of them to like a movie. This means that the interval between zero and one thumb is smaller than the interval between one and two thumbs. For another example, let's turn to video games. If you have ever played a role-playing video game, you will know that you move up in levels very quickly at the beginning of the game. This is so that you keep playing the game and don't quit because it's too hard. Just like the Siskel and Ebert example, the intervals between higher levels are bigger. The real-world consequence of this is that we can't treat a value of 2 like the sum of two values of one. So we need to do some fancy stats to deal with variables like this. Variables without equal intervals, but where the numbers are meaningful, are called ordinal variables. To decide between the other types of continuous variables, we need to know if the variable has a true zero. You've heard this in class, and maybe you don't quite get it. It is a bit confusing. So what do we mean by true zero? Well, if it's possible to have an objective lack of something, that scale has a true zero. If you have zero apples, you totally lack apples. So that has a true zero. If you dislike something, that doesn't mean that you have a complete lack of like for it. I can't even imagine what it would mean to completely not like something. I mean, maybe tasting it would make you violently ill or something. Even then, it might not make everyone violently ill, so it doesn't have a true zero. If it has a true zero, we call that a ratio level scale. 
If it lacks a true zero, but has equal intervals, we call that an interval level scale. A variable type that you encounter a lot in psychological research is a Likert scale. These scales typically use whole numbers ranging from 1 to 5 or 1 to 7. For the purposes of this class, Likert scales are treated as interval level measurements. If this class is all that matters to you, you can stop listening now. If not, I want to question the idea that a Likert scale is an interval level scale. It's easy enough to do this using research from psychology itself. Psychological research indicates to us that people like to bunch up around the middle. Moving further away from the middle is difficult. But once people decide to move away from the middle, they like to bunch at the extremes. So it's like you have a really big interval from the middle to the next highest number, and then really small intervals up to the highest number, which will again have a big interval associated with it. This doesn't really sound like an interval level scale to me. There are some really great statistical methods to deal with this, things like ordered probit or logistic regression, but we won't cover those in this class. If you're interested, Make sure you talk to your stats and upper-level psychology professors about this.